And now back to our favourite hobby here on the internet, yelling at retards and telling them they're wrong. There is, however, option number three, which is Japan, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, Japan, who's uh, the government official in charge of luring the Olympics to Japan, just recently wrote to the Olymp International Olympic Committee, wrote this weekend to say that the committee should be confident that everything in Japan is fine. Everything is fine, especially with that whole nuclear situation just a couple hours outside Tokyo. <laughs> Sometimes I just think funny things. <laughs> that Japanese official wrote that letter to the International Olympic Committee on the same day that uh, these guys, in this tape here from the BBC, took a radiation leak reading at the destroyed Fukushima nuclear plant, which said that uh, anybody standing in that spot for a few hours um, would find themselves in a danger enough dangerous enough place, a radioactive enough place, that they would be dead in four hours. Just how worried should the outside world be about the latest radiation readings coming from the Fukushima nuclear plant? On Sunday, Tokyo Electric Power said it had taken a reading close to water storage tanks of 1,800 millisieverts an hour. That is 18 times higher than a reading taken at the same spot two weeks ago. 1,800 millisieverts an hour, enough to kill you in four hours, and uh, 18 times what that reading was two weeks ago. But do not worry, Olympic Committee, everything is totally under control in Japan, except for the out-of-control nuclear disaster. But other than that, everything else is totally under control. We got this. As the Japanese government bucks for the Olympics, the Japanese Prime Minister is actually leaving the G20 early to go lobby the International Olympic Committee in person. As they try to make that case, the Japanese government is also announcing that it, as the government, will take over the management of the ongoing catastrophe at Fukushima. They had, up to this point, left it in the hands of essentially the power company that owned and operated the plant when all this happened in the first place. But now the government says that the government will take over. Is that reason to feel more hopeful about them getting that situation under control. For context, yesterday there was another earthquake in Japan, a 6.9 magnitude earthquake. And also yesterday, those same workers from that BBC clip went out and took another radiation leak reading at the site of the nuclear plant. And what had been an 1800 millisieverts reading this weekend is now a 2200 millisieverts reading. This is now two and a half years long a two and a half year long ongoing accumulating international ecological disaster. Why is it still getting worse and when will it stop getting worse? Joining us now is Edwin Lyman. He's a senior global security scientist specializing in nuclear power safety with the Union of Concerned Scientists. Dr. Lyman, thanks very much for being with us tonight. Good evening, Rachel. So the Japanese government um, says it is taking over. Do we have any reason to believe that they have better ideas about how to make this situation better than the people who've been handling it thus far? I'm afraid not, because the Japanese government is as culpable as TEPCO was in the genesis of this crisis to begin with. And the government is scrambling to try to come up with a solution so they can tell the world that everything's fine and bring the Olympics here. And I think they're being too hasty. What about this plan that we've been seeing written up in the press about creating an underground ice wall to try to seal off the highly contaminated areas of the plant from groundwater, from any fl water flow through that's resulting in all of this radioactive water leaking into the ocean? <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. Well, the ice wall isn't as crazy as it sounds. It is a technology that's been used in other applications, but it's never been used for a nuclear disaster like this one. It's never been used to try to contain this much radioactivity, and it's never been used for a period of time that may require decades before the site is cleaned up. So uh, I think it is actually a very risky plan and a lot more complicated than just digging trenches and packing them full with clay. Yeah, on that point, I mean, I don't mean to be blunt, but what's the better idea? Are, are there solutions that either are more proven or more, uh, I guess, obviously sustainable that the government and TEPCO haven't tried that you think might make sense? Well, uh, 
as they say in so many other contexts, there are no good options. Mm. And the, the frozen wall may, may be as good as the, the others. The, the problem is that it requires a continuous power source to keep that soil frozen. And I think I would prefer a simpler, more straightforward method of simply uh, built, constructing an impermeable material wall that you don't have to worry is going to melt if you lose power for an extended period of time. We are told, um, and the press reports differ on this, but we're told in at least some press reports that there are hundreds of tons of radioactive contaminated water that are leaking into the Pacific Ocean daily uh, from this site. And obviously the ocean is a big thing and dilution is a big factor. But what do you see as the potential impact of all of this contaminated water leaking into the ocean over time? How worrying is it? Well, it is true that the emissions that are going on now from the site are much, much smaller than they were in the weeks after the reactors exploded. But it is a continuous, low-level leak of radioactive material, and there are uh, there's seafood that does concentrate radioactivity. So the fishing industry in the region has been devastated, and it looks like it's not going to come back anytime soon. And there will be occasional uh, levels of contamination seafood much further away that will be uh, unacceptable. So people are going to be slowly consuming the radioactive material coming out of Fukushima. It has been two and a half years since this happened. This is the biggest disaster since Chernobyl. The response after the initial uh, declaration that this was a cold shutdown and everything was fine has now been ramped up from a one to a number three on the nuclear accident scale. And it doesn't feel like they've got it under control. Do you think there should be some sort of international parachute in, in international expert effort to help Japan out here that this is beyond, this is a problem that is bigger than that one country and they need more help than they're getting? One of the problems that has been around since the beginning is Japan has been very reluctant to seek international help. It waited for several days after the accident started because it was hoping it could just stabilize the situation and then tell the world that uh, there was no problem. And it's that kind of pride, I think, which is also continuing to be a problem. Certainly, they should be trying to get the best ideas from anyone they can find. Unfortunately, I think the range uh, is very limited. And the, the ice wall is an idea which uh, has been applied in the United States, for example. Uh, so it is worth examination. But uh, the fact is that their options are limited. You have a radioactive, soggy mess at the site. And the, what really needs to be done is purification of the water, packaging of the radioactive material in, stable, uh, in a stable form so that it can eventually be disposed of in a way that's isolated from the environment. Dr. Edwin Lyman, uh, nuclear power and security expert with the Union of Concerned Scientists. Uh, it's nice to have you back even though we're always talking about super depressing things. Thank you, sir. That don't make no sense.